My um, thesis is called Sustainability Values in Alternative Food Networks, a case of box schemes and CSAs in England and Wales. Oops. Okay. So the conventional food system has had detrimental effects on rural life, environment, and people's health. The organic food, food movement was an alternative to this system, but unfortunately, it embraced neoliberalism, and as a consequence, we can find organic food in supermarkets. However, some within the organic movement decided to become independent and to trade independently from supermarkets. And that's where both box schemes and CSAs are situated within the, within the farming system in the UK. So alternative food networks literature is uh, the literature that studies box schemes, CSAs, and other AFNs like farmers markets and uh, farm shops. This literature can be divided into three, early critical and community and self-help self literature. But here we would only talk about early and critical. So early, early literature is about defining what AFNs are and extolling their values. And then critical is about challenging those definitions and demonstrating that those characteristics that early literature claims defines AFN are not always present in AFNs. So, because there is this backwards and forwards between early and critical, the question arises of whether AFNs are different to conventional food systems. So, this debate is, is not resolved. And um, so, we can say that both systems, conventional and um, AFNs, are hybrid. That is, they borrow from conventional and alternative values. But the difference is that all AFNs from be to practice sustainable values. So in order to answer this question, we then have to ask ourselves, how are sustainability values practiced and to what extent? So um, the aims and objectives of my th the aims and objectives of my thesis are to determine how and to what extent sustainability values are practiced by box teams and CSAs. And I'll do that through three objectives. The first one is to establish operational and financial characteristics, then to develop a methodology to um, answer the research question, and third, to use the methodology, uh, to, to implement the methodology using the operational and financial characteristics. So before I continue, um, I'd like to uh, I'd like to speak about uh, three different um, three different um, terms that I'm using in my title. So the first is values. So Gregory 2001 says that values that there's no systematic theory of values because they can be seen from three different perspectives. So the first perspective is sociological, where values are conceptions of the desirable. The second one is uh, maximize is economic perspective where the idea is maximizing so people know what they want and they try to achieve it by investing as little effort as possible and the third perspective is linguistic where values are embedded in words and therefore they influence human behavior the value of a word is gained through its position in relation to an opposite or within a system so for example we understand the value of red because if is within a system of color, which determines how producers, distributors, retailers, and consumers behave within a food system. Lorsen and No, 2017, um, say that AFN interprets values as a way to add value to a food product and therefore increase, increase its economic value. And then Kirwan et al, 2017, says that food systems are conceptualized wow. under different paradigms. Paradigms are set paradigm set out what is conventional and what is alternative to find the value of both within a food system. So from these perspectives, I chose a sociological uh, perspective, which is uh, conceptions of the desirable. And what I did is I drew a list of values or what those, do, those uh, working within AFNs aim to achieve. So, and then I classified into four. So, so, so first we have sustainability values, which include environmental, social, and economic, and ethical values like trust, transparency, 
then hedonistic values like health and freshness, and then everyday living like convenience and price. But then I realized that some literature highlights that, that some of these values uh, are not exclusive of AFNs. So for example, we can find um, ethical values like trust and transparency in economic relationships within any type of industry, not just sustainable food system. Um, hedonistic and everyday living values, although they motivate people to take part in AFNs, they are not uh, they are not exclusive of AFNs and they can also be exercised, for example, through supermarkets. So we can buy organic food in supermarkets and we can find convenience and price in supermarkets. Um, so so therefore what I what I um, what I argue is that sustainability values, these ones, are, are the values that differentiate AFNs from conventional systems. And to um, make that more specific, I use the Forsen and Koski 2014 framework, where they identify the environmental, economic, and social impacts of that AFNs try to achieve. Um, but since impacts are conceptions of the desirable, so this is what we want to achieve through AFNs, uh, then these impacts become values. And then what these authors do is to link those values uh, to AFN characteristics. So they identify four uh, characteristics, requirements for products and production, reduced distance, new forms of market governance, and strong relationships. So these are the values that I am, um, this is my definition of values. The next um, um, term that I would like to talk about is sustainability. So sustainability is defined as the analysis of social, economic, and environmental values. And Alan et al. 1991 says that sustainability is the equitable balance between social, economic, and environmental values. And has a name 2013 challenges this idea and he asked, how are social, economic, and environmental values equitably balanced in practice? He says that this question cannot be answered because at its core, there's a conflict of values. In other words, in practice, one sustainability value will be prioritized over others. So given, given this, what Hassanein says, Maxi 2006 proposes that sustainability is socially and politically constructed. And people that work towards sustainability define what is to be sustained and how. Therefore, it is inevitable that one sustainability value will be prioritized over others and that some unsustainable values will also be adopted to achieve main, the main sustainability values. This shows that AFNs are hybrid, that is, they borrow from conventional and alternative values. So this research acknowledges this hybridity. So to start developing the aims and objectives that I spoke of, um, uh, the thesis looked at how hybridity is studied. And here I concentrated on two elements. So the first one is data. So hybridity is evidenced through opinions, views, and motivations. So for example, in one study, uh, shows a farm shop owner, how a farm shop owner reflects on the motivations that drove her into opening a farm shop but the compromises that she must make to satisfy customers. The second way in which hybridity is um, evidence is through operational characteristics. So for example, one paper describes how PDO mozzarella cheese is made artisanally and then how different case studies adopt artisanal and industrial production techniques to make video cheese. So the thesis argues that operational characteristics are more appropriate because they demonstrate better how values are practiced or operationalized in AFNs. In other words, operational characteristics are how values are put into practice. The second element is the types of AFNs. So we know that AFNs have different operations characteristics. So a CSA operates different uh, a farm shop. Um, if we study sustainability from an operational perspective, it will show different types of sustainability. But this will be due to the fact that there, that there are different types of 
operational characteristics within different types of AFNs. But instead, if we study sustainability within AFNs with similar operational characteristics, we can then see how sustainability changes from one to the other. So the study chooses box schemes and CSAs because of their similarity in operational characteristics. So just to recap this first part, the question, and then my research question is how are sustainability values practiced and to what extent? Values are defined by Fursan Lankowski's framework and sustainability is uh, defined as socially and politically constructed. We understand that uh, AFNs are hybrid and that uh, operational characteristics and using the same type of AFN, uh, in this case, boxing and CSAs, is more suitable for this research. Um, so given these parameters, I turn into uh, AFN uh, 30 Food Networks literature. And what I find is that this literature does not give, give me the uh, analytical tools to conduct my research given these parameters. So there, there are ser several limitations of this literature within the context of this thesis. The first one is that there is a, a strong focus on human behavior. So for example, they don't, they not that much literature looks at operational characteristics. They rather concentrate on how people behave within the system and not how the enterprise behaves. The second limitation is the way that uh, this literature studies values. So one way is that uh, uh, sustainability uh, values are assumed to be present when one characteristic is identified. So for example, if uh, uh, see a box scheme sources local food, it is assumed that all sustainability values are accomplished. Uh, and then the other, the other way in which it studied values is by analyzing how values are not met, which is what critical literature mostly does. There is also a tendency to focus on direct sales, so that direct sale between farmer and consumer. Um, and as we will see later on, AFNs uh, do more than direct sales because many more actors are involved. Uh, okay, so... So by, by saying all this, I, I want to, um, I am arguing that Alternative Food Networks literature does not give me the analytical tools that I need to develop my research. So because of that, I drew into values-based supply chain literature. So this literature has several advantages. It focuses on the enterprise rather than on the people taking part in the enterprise. This literature tries to resolve two main problems. The first one, the closure of mid-sized farms in the U.S., which are too small for commodified conventional markets and too big for direct marketing. Um, the other problem that it tries to resolve in the, is the increased demand for local food. And the um, researchers that uh, contribute to this literature have recognized that small-scale producers selling directly to consumers is not, is not enough to satisfy the demand for local food. A third advantage is that this literature comes from universities that are within the land-grant university system. So this system gives uh, a federal uh, government money to universities to solve the problems of um, local, local farmers. So because they do that, they have a, a very practical um, outcome. Well, they, they, they work to resolve problems. Their research is um, a, a focus on, on resolving problems. So they have a very a practical element to their research. And uh, this literature has helped to develop the food hub sector in the US. So by food hubs, I mean aggregation and distribution enterprises that sell at volume. And then because they, they, this literature is very practical, they uh, identify the importance of operational and financial characteristics to understand how AFN enterprises work. And finally, uh, they focus uh, on, on the uh, economic aspects 
of the AFN. So whilst AFN literature focuses on how AFNs impact others, like for example, local, local economies, Values-based supply chain literature focuses on the finances of the AFN and how to improve them. But this literature also has limitations. So um, it focuses on scale-up AFNs, and there is a focus on measuring how productive an AFN is, overlooking the values that they that these enterprises try to achieve. So from Alternative Food Network's literature, we have sustainability and values. And from here, we have this practical um, perspective and, finance, and operational and financial characteristics. So to merge these two, uh, I took from business studies the concept of competitive strategy, which was proposed by Michael Porter from the Harvard Business School. So competitive strategy has two parts. Sorry. Competitive strategy is the strategy an enterprise implements to differentiate itself from its competitors. And this concept has two elements, strategic positioning, which is the aim or values of the enterprise, or in other words, what an enterprise aims to do. And then supply chain strategy, which means uh, the activities of the supply chain or how a product is produced, packed, distributed and purchased. Um, strategic fit or alignment is the alignment between what the enterprise aims to do and what it actually does, or the alignment between strategic positioning and supply chain strategy. So in this scenario, the activities of the enterprise should be the operationalization of values, and the values of the enterprise should determine its activity. In, in achieving a strategic fit or disalignment, trade-offs are inevitable. To a, a, trade-offs are inevitable. And, and decisions must be made to prioritize one thing over another. So this is, these are the literatures that I drew from, drew from to build my conceptual framework. So now I'm going to talk about methods. So I chose as a paradigm pragmatism because it allows me to use quantitative and qualitative data as I have operational and financial character characteristics as data. Um, I chose as my methodology mixed methods because it allows for several analytical processes. So my research, I approached it uh, in different ways, which not always moved the research process forward but help me to understand how to conduct my research. So I began uh, my, my data collection by working with the Better Food Traders project. This is a project from um, growing communities. And, um, and the idea was to develop the thesis through that project. But uh, at some point, um, but we couldn't continue working with them. So I did some work with them, and then after that, I decided to do a national box scheme and CSA survey. In hindsight, this survey was done too early, but it also taught me uh, more, more things about what I was trying to do. So then I decided to go with case studies, and, and first I uh, analyzed the quantitative data, so their finances, and then I analyzed their qualitative data, their operations. So in, in, in all in all, I did four analytical processes. And as I said, the method chosen was case studies because they allow for the deep understanding of a phenomenon. And it also allows me to explain why and how events uh, are produced. So these are uh, my eight case studies. Um, I have seven in England and one in Wales. And this is a table of uh, the characteristics of those case studies. So, um, so here, this is the case study, the, the years that it, they've been in business. So I have from six years to 20 years, their legal structure, their average to turnover. So I have, for example, Green Isle Growers, who makes 5,239 uh, pounds per year versus growing communities, which makes over 700,000 pounds a year. The number of employees of those enterprises, so uh, for example, here we have two, four versus 30, 
and the, the activities that they do. So for example, Future Farms is a CSA. It has also a village shop, a weekly market, and they have their own production. But for example, if we look at Costco, they are just a straight up box. So they, 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 they are quite different within, within uh, the sample. So I'll tell you the main findings to then explain how I arrived to those findings. So the research question is how are sustainability values practiced and to what extent? The answer is case studies choose a principal value and a way to behave towards earning money, which have called commercial behavior. This impacts sustainability values by making a trade-off between social, economic, and environmental sustainability values. The extent to which sustainability values are practiced is dependent upon principal value and commercial behavior. So this is, this is the methodology that I developed, and uh, it's divided into three parts. The first is to identify the operational and financial characteristics of, of the case studies. Then I identify the principal value and commercial behavior from those operational characteristics and financial characteristics. And then I analyze how the principal value and commercial behavior impact on economic, um, uh, social, and environmental values. I'm just going to come out here to go to the next slide. So to explain this, um, to explain this, um, me this methodology, I'm going to use two case studies. So the first one is canal site. So uh, the way in which canal site sources is that they are organically certified and they all the food they sell, they grow themselves. So they have their own production. Because they do that, they, they sell the food is from the within the locality. Uh, it's UK produce and it's um, local and seasonal. Sorry, and, and the produce is local and seasonal. In terms of um, the, the other operational characteristics is, is that they pack, they make customers pack their own bags. And, and in terms of distribution, they, they have pickup points and headquarters. They do this, the frequency of these activities, activities is three times a week. In terms of products, they offer fresh produce boxes of three different sizes, but all of them have vegetables and fruit. And they are the second most expensive uh, box within the sample. They don't offer any other boxes and they don't offer any other products. Um, customers order by email and they have to have a subscription, which they can only cancel two months in advance and they have to make monthly payments. Um, so in terms of financial characteristics, I, I identify just financial viability approaches, and which means how they approach financial viability. So their approach is an equilibrium approach. That means that operational costs are covered by the revenue generated from sales. And if they want to do any extra work, for example, community work, they fundraise for that work. So because both areas are covered by different revenue streams, they achieve an equilibrium. So what I did with all the sourcing characteristics is create something I call enterprise types. So Canal Site is a community enterprise. And the reason for that is uh, because they call, they, what they aim to do is to cultivate a community that produces and consumes food. So in order to do that, they have to have their own production so that people can get involved in food production, so that clients can get involved in food production. Um, and, and so because they do that, they, their principal value is community building. So in terms of their business size, their business size is limited. And the reason for that is because they are limited by a, by a piece of land, and that piece of land has a certain, um, it can reach a, a, a certain amount of customers that, that it can serve, a capacity that it can serve. But also because Canal Site believes that a, a community cannot be more than, more than 150 people. So because their priority is um, community building, they, they have to be, uh, their business size has, has to be limited. So customer retention methods is another concept that I came up with. 
And the idea here is to uh, bring together all the operational characteristics that have to do with the interaction between the, 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 the enterprise and its customers. And so I created, I, I identified four methods in which they do this. So the lowest methods make it harder for customers to uh, buy from and, and consume from these businesses. And then method four makes it easier for customers to consume from these um, enterprises. So Canal Site has method two. That is because their convenience is not that high. So people have to go and pack their own bags and they have to drive to pick up points. Their choice is also low because they only offer three times of box kit, boxes and they, they sell only local and seasonal food. So local and seasonal food is less attractive because people are, are accustomed to eat off season produce as well. Um, Okay, and then the final um, element is commercial behavior. So this is how um, this is how people behave towards earning money. So um, this is how people behave towards earning money. So people um, in so can, in Canal Side uh, they prioritize commercial behavior as long as sustainability values have been met. So that means that uh, they care about earning money, but as long as they meet the values, their principal values. So that means that their commercial activity is not driven nor shy. So that is because they have a limited business size, but they care about earning money. So, um, so then we then the what the methodology does is look at the. Uh, AFN characteristics identified by Forsell and Lankowski and how their practices fit within those characteristics. So for increased requirements for products and production, they are certified organic. Uh, in terms of reduced distance between producers and consumers, they have a high le level of local food. So that means that their food does not travel far between the place where it's produced and the place that it's consumed. In terms of new forms of market governance, these, the, um, uh, sorry, um, Canal Side has direct sales. That is, they grow the food and they sell it directly to consumers. And the relationships that they prioritize is the relationship with customers. Labor rights is an uh, AFN characteristic that Forsella and Lankowski did not include in their framework, but I included it, and it could be argued that it could be included in new forms of market governance but I have it separately to highlight its importance. So here in labor rights, I look at fair wages to employees. So in Canal Side, they pay above the UK living wage. Uh, I also look at job quality through the skill levels that uh, the enterprise offers. So Canal Side offers high skill and medium skill jobs. And then um, the, the relationship between job quality and wages. And um, so here I identify uh, uh, in canals at a high pay gap, which means there is a difference between medium skill and high skill uh, jobs in terms of wages. Um, so, sorry, I'm just, okay. Um, so priority uh, to community building means that trade-offs, means trade-offs between um, social, economic, and environmental sustainability. Social and environmental sustainability are chosen over economic sustainability. Environmental sustainability um, is implemented by having a high level of local food. So food does not travel far from where it's produced to where it's consumed. Social sustainability uh, is evidenced by because they provide uh, customers with opportunities for food production where they can improve their mental and physical health. Economic sustainability in this case is traded off. Community enterprises cannot increase their commercial activity because they are the limited amount of land they have and keeping a sense of community. Direct sales further this limitation by offering only local and seasonal produce, which is less appealing to customers. So that is, that is how the methodology works in the analysis of canal side. So now I'm going to uh, also uh, compare Canal Site to Cofco. 
which is a box scheme in Cambridgeshire. So like um, Canal Site, of course, also organically certified, but um, unlike Canal Site, what this enterprise does is to buy all their produce. So they buy from growers of different sizes, from wholesalers and from wholesalers that are also growers. Um, that means that the geographical origin of their products is as local as possible. That means that if they can source local produce, they do, but if they have to go beyond the locality, they would do so to, uh, to ensure that there is a box offer uh, every, uh, every week of the year. So produce is UK grown uh, and from beyond, and they offer variety. Unlike a uh, canal site, in, um, in um, Kofco, they, the, the staff packs the boxes and they deliver it to your home. So this makes it a lot more um, convenient. And they do this four times a week. Also, they offer a lot of choice. So we can see here all the different sizes of boxes they offer and the different types. So they offer boxes just with fruit, customized, and with vegetables. And they are the fourth uh, most expensive uh, box in the sample. They don't offer any other boxes, but they do offer other products and they have a wide range from cleaning products to bread to canned products, and you can buy those through their online shop. So in terms of the ways in which customers order, you can order by a website and they have a facility there to pay and to order. Um, and they give customers the option of subscription or no subscription. And within subscription, to cancel, you need to cancel the day before delivery and you make weekly payments. In terms of their financial, their financial characteristics, their financial viability approach is a market approach. So that means that this enterprise uh, covers all its operational costs through the revenue, through the sales revenue that they create. So if we look at the enterprise types, uh, uh, this is a trade enterprise. So their, their principal value is to market the most amount of sustainable food to move from small restricted markets into accessible bigger ones to transition into sustainable food systems. And as we saw in the sourcing, they can do that because they, they can buy from as many growers as they want, or they can buy more from the growers that, or wholesalers that they already buy. So if they increase their um, customer numbers, they, they have ways in which they can source produce for those new customers. So because they do that, they are an expansive business size. So they're not limited by land or by a sense of community. They, they can expand as, as much as they would like to. In terms of customer retention methods, they implement method four. So they are highly convenient uh, because as I said, they, um, this, they have home delivery, they do so four times a week. They have a lot of choice because of all the boxes they offer and they offer variety. So for example, during Hungry Gap, which is when production in the UK uh, is low, they um, source, uh, for example, uh, for example um, food from tomatoes, let's say from Spain. So they can offer more variety than those, than, um, Canal side who, who only offers local and seasonal. And then in terms of commercial behavior, like Canal side, they for them it's important to earn money, but also as long as sustainability values have been met. So their commercial activity is driven. And how this, this, does this um, um, affect social, environmental, and economic values? So in terms of increased requirements for products and production, they are certified organic. In terms of reduced distance between producers and consumers, they have a low level of local food because food has, has to travel a lot further than in the case of Canal Side. Uh, in terms of new forms of market governance, they do direct purchases. So that means they buy directly from farmers, although not all their food, uh, and then they sell it uh, direct to consumers. Uh, in terms of strong relationships, they prioritize the relationships with their growers and with their suppliers, like wholesalers, for example. And in terms of labor rights, they pay above the UK living wage and they offer high-skill and low-skill jobs, 
where there is a significant pay gap between them to incentivize workers to become high skilled. So it could be said that uh, environmental and social sustainability values are traded off for economic sustainability in this scenario. Bigger customers mean more financial sustainability, but to achieve this, they need higher volumes, which cannot be sourced locally. So food travels more than in the case of canal side. But trading more organic food than canal side, but by trading more organic food than canal side, Kofco may contribute as much to environmental sustainability because more land is under organic production. In terms of social sustainability, uh, this, uh, this business, this AFN, does not contribute to the mental and physical health of its customers because it's, it doesn't offer places to grow food. But what it does is that it keeps farmers in business, which is essential to maintain rural communities. So if we look at how Canal Side and Kofco achieve these values is in a completely different way. So whilst um, Canal Side achieves environmental values by having local food and social values by providing spaces to grow food, um, Kofco does it by keeping farmers in business uh, and uh, keep having more organic land under, under production. So um, finally, I, I want to um, discuss several points about, uh, about these findings. So the first is an economic success. So as Moya mentioned, um, I went into a PhD after and after closing my, my own farm business. So for me, economic success was always something that I wanted to understand. How is it that some AFNs are more economically successful than others? But during the, um, during the course of the research, I realized that um, economic su success depended on sustainability values. So enterprises that choose to have a bigger customer base, like Costco, for example, are more successful economically uh, economically. So then the question is, why is it that not all box schemes and CSAs implement the same model? And the reason is because each box scheme and CSA wants to achieve different things. And that's what the principal value points to. So community enterprises want to cultivate a community that produces and consumes food. Grower enterprises want to provide member growers with a fair and secure income and trade enterprises want to market the most amount of sustainable food. These different values require different sets of operation and financial characteristics, and in turn, they lead to different types of economic success. But principal value alone is not responsible for economic success. Commercial behavior is also essential. Canal site demonstrates that although they have a limited business size, they are financially viable because they care about earning money as much as they care about building community. As such, economic success can mean having an enterprise with a limited number of customers and generating a profit every year. But it can also mean bigger customer bases that can keep on growing and therefore increase um, turnovers. So economic success has different meanings depending on uh, how the enterprise is set up. The second thing that I would like to discuss is the legitimacy of AFNs. So Mount 2012 argues that legitimacy of AFNs is maintained only through the direct exchange. So I have shown through this thesis that AFNs are not only about farmers selling directly to consumers, but that they are all, there are also other actors involved in, in the supply chain, like wholesalers, and that they are in, incredibly important to that supply chain. So AFNs are not only doing direct sales, so producer to consumer, but also direct purchases. And what the thesis demonstrates is that box schemes and CSAs that do either or both practice sustainability values and trade off some of those values for others. The problem with saying that legitimacy is maintained through direct exchange is that it assumes or wishes that AFNs remain small farm enterprises led by a farmer. This may be due to the focus and fascination in the literature toward, towards the individual farmer. 
but the thesis shows that AFNs are composed of organized groups of people, whether they are producers or consumers of, or both. So there must be a shift uh, from looking at the individual to look at the collective. As groups, they must establish a goal or value to work towards, which in this thesis has been identified as the principal value. Case studies design their operational and financial characteristics to meet this value, which is what Porter calls um, a strategic fit. Given this argument, the direct exchange is not critical to maintain legitimacy. Instead, the principal value and trade-offs of other values are what is critical to maintain legitimacy. To create a sustainable food system, we must look beyond the idea of small direct exchange enterprises. Other forms of trades at different scales must also be included in a sustainable food system, especially because food is not only consumed at home, but also in restaurants, events, hospitals, prisons, and, food and schools. The scaled up events like Kofco are necessary not only to reach those customers in their homes, but also in these other markets. And indeed, this is already happening in the US with food hubs and here and in the UK with organic uh, wholesalers. The last um, point that I would like to discuss is sustainability. So the thesis has implemented a novel way to study sustainability by analyzing it from the case studies definition of sustainability rather than trying to define sustainability. So that's so defining sustainability like from the outset would be uh, a top-down approach. And what I've done here is a bottom-up approach where where I have defined sustainability through what the case studies tell me is sustainable for them. Looking at sustainability in this way allows us to see trade-offs and their inevitability in the practice of sustainability. As such, it is impossible to achieve the equitable balance of sustainability values because the operations of an AFN are designed to meet a principal value. Also, AFNs cannot guarantee the sustainability of all the actors equally. The thesis evidences that some relationships have priority over others, thus the sustainability of some actors are prioritized over others. Looking at sustainability from the bottom, from the bottom up, has has a disadvantage, which is that case studies be, which is that what case studies believe is sustainable becomes sustainable. Uh, an, an example of this is food miles. Recent studies have shown that local food is not necessarily more uh, sustainable because it, it tends to be transported on individual cars. Whereas if a lorry full of produce um, uh, transports the same amount of food, then it will be more sustainable. So um, sustainability needs both approaches, a top-down approach where sustainability is defined and a bottom-up approach to see how uh, those um, practicing sustainability do so. And, and both approaches are necessary to understand sustainability. So, so that's the end of my presentation. Uh, and I would like to thank Moya and Ulrich for helping me develop this research. Uh, to Francis for all the many hours of fun that I had with him. And to Sam for letting me live uh, in her chapel and making me her friend. To Barbara for being my friend and to the admin team at CORE for all their help and support, especially with the boring stuff. Thank you very much.